You're listening to the Radio Ammo Breakfast, only on Kiwi. It's now time to um, widen our perspective on the world and find out what is going on on the other side. It's a letter from Copenhagen. Our correspondent in uh, Copenhagen is Daniel Nielsen. G'day there, Daniel. How you doing? I'm good, thanks, Wamo. How are you? Very, 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 very well. What's the big story over there at the moment? Well, the, the massive story, I would call it, for, for a country of this size, is um, revolves around this former elite soldier's autobiography. Uh, the guy's name is uh, Thomas Ratzak, uh, which is spelt Ratzak, which sounds kind of funny in English. But he's, and he's a, um, <laughs> he's a year soldier, which translates to a hunter soldier. Because that so kind of like our, our, our SAS. Yeah, I think so. He's a, for, I mean, it just means he's a highly trained special forces soldier. They have a... Um, uh, I think it's a 12-week uh, course that they have to get through with some uh, pretty hardcore training. It's kind of like the GI Joes of the Danish military. Right. Um, but this guy, he can he can also write uh, either that or he has a really good editor. Uh, his books, it's pretty gripping. I've read the first few chapters of it, and it contains loads of loads of detailed descriptions of military missions he's been on, especially in Afghanistan. Due to this. Uh, it sounds like we uh, might have... Stop the book being... Stand, stand by there, Daniel. Sounds like we've got just got a little bit of um, audio... It has a chapter in there where... Drop. He's, he's, uh, he's, been, on a, a, he's been on an undercut... Which the format... Sorry, are you with me, Waymo? No, we're with you now. So apologies for that. We just had a little bit of um, an audio audio glitch. But do, um, do, do carry on. We were talking about how uh, he's, just, um, he's just written this book. Yeah, it's um, it's got yeah. So I'm saying he's he's quite a good writer. I think he's got it's quite a gripping piece. Mm. Um, he's got loads of descriptions of uh, military missions he's been on in Afghanistan, uh, but because of these detailed explanations and descriptions, the defence ministry has actually tried to stop the book from being published. They've tried to ban it. Uh, there's a chapter in the book uh, where he goes on an undercover mission. Uh, with his, his platoon, they're all disguised as civilians in, um, in um, civilian Afghani clothing. But uh, the thing is, they're carrying weapons on this mission, and they've got weapons stashed in the cars that they're travelling in as well. And now the Geneva Convention on uh, on warfare actually specifically prohibits soldiers from engaging in combat if they're disguised in civilian clothing. Huh. Um, so, I mean, this is one of the things he's been criticised for is... Um, it's basically showing that the Danish military doesn't respect uh, international law of warfare. And, I mean, that's just one of the things that the military is not happy about the public knowing. I mean, that's quite obvious. Yeah. But the, the Defence Force is also saying that the book endangers Danish troops abroad and compromises national security and damages relations with, other, with foreign powers. Uh, and it, it did get to a point last week where the publisher of the book actually agreed to let the military um, edit certain parts. Um, and the nation's top military officer wrote personally to the editors of all national newspapers asking that they actually stop reporting on the subject. But um, one of the country's big three daily broadsheet papers, uh, the centre-left aligned Politigen newspaper, they decided to publish the entire book as a protest, arguing that the military's demands were an, an attack on the freedom of speech. So you can go to the newspaper's website and actually read uh, their justification for publishing the book. It's been translated to English, the editorial. So if you are interested in that, go to www.politigen.dk. That's P-O-L-I-T-I-K-E-N.dk. And so, so, so you can basically um, get the get the whole general gist of the book uh, on that site. No, you can get the justification for the newspaper publishing the book. Okay, right. Okay. To get the gist of the book, you'd have to go to the uh, the Copenhagen Post's website, which is uh, which the one I write for. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's uh, cphpost.dk. There you go. Bit of advertising. No, no problem. <laughs> and and so, um, I mean, is this guy just seeking fame, really, for for his for his exploits, or is he actually uh, whistleblowing? He's not. I don't think he's doing either. In fact, when you read the book, it's almost a tribute to uh, Jeerkopse, which is the elite force he's part of. You know, he talks about how much he's wanted to be part of that force and the training he's gone through and the preparation he's done to do it. And the way he writes about these missions that he's been on, he's, he's really proud of what he's done. I think he's had some problems with authorities within the, the, the Corps, 
uh, he, he did leave uh, the Special Forces for a while, but he went back to it. Um, so I don't think he's trying to bring them into dis- disrepute or anything like that. The problem is just all the detail that he's put in there. Yeah. It's, it's, um, it's operational details that the military don't want uh, you know, newspapers reporting on and, and things like that. So obviously with all this publicity, it's going gonna, gonna to be a bestseller. Exactly, yeah. A- apart from the, I mean, there's the paper printed, uh, I think it was between 100,000 and 150,000 copies of the book just as a, as a special um, segment in the paper, you know, an extra, uh, what do you call it, an extra a part of the paper. Mm, mm. I've got that. I can show you, actually. There you go. Mm. Oh, I see. If you're, if you're still uh, streaming it uh, on the video. <laughs> yep, you can see, see that on the video. Uh, okay, yeah. so... Um, uh, 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 does it look like there's going to be any kind of uh, official repercussions for this man at all? Well, the military has reported the editor of uh, the newspaper which published. Uh, they've reported him to the police for jeopardising national security. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean anything will happen to him. It just means the police are investigating the newspaper and its editor. And um, they've also filed uh, an injunction against the publication of the book. Uh, that went to court um, the injunction, I mean, it included a demand that all the book, all the copies of the book, be located. Um, the book's publishers' offices were going to be searched, and all the journalists who had review copies had to be named as well, and and give their books back. But the judge in that case didn't uphold the injunction, um, although she said she would have had the newspaper, had Politiken newspaper, not published um, the text already. Mm. Uh, the latest development now that this has just happened today is uh, the military has brought preliminary criminal charges against the author uh, Thomas Ratzak for, as they reason, publicising confidential inf- information and revealing military secrets. If he's formally charged and convicted, there's a, a slight difference there. That's the Danish legal system for you. Uh, he could be jailed for up to 12 years. So if you want to, I mean, you, you, this story will keep unfolding and I can give you another update next week, but that's, that's where it's at now. Um, right. It looks like he, he may be charged, uh, he may not. Great. And I also um, see another big story uh, in that part of the world is a, um, a, a, a mother who's gone on to YouTube looking for the father of her child, is that right? Yeah, that's correct. No, I mean, yeah, it seemed, it seemed a big story for about a day. And uh, yeah, this this video, this uh, a Danish woman, young Danish blonde woman, very uh, stereotypical looking uh, Danish woman. Yeah. Uh, she was on YouTube, a sort of a three minute video where she seems to be tracking down the father of her baby, who she met on a in a one night stand, uh, or she had a one night stand with. It's been seen by over a million people in uh, less than four days, but it's fake. Ah. <laughs> so. It was a tourism agency, uh, a tourism agency called Visit Denmark. They have uh, offices all over the world. I actually applied for a job with them about half a year ago. Yeah, didn't get it. <laughs> uh, but it turns out they're behind the video where this this woman, Danish Karen, she's called. She's holding a little baby called August, and she's telling the viewers how she's searching for the father who she can't remember after a one night stand out in Copenhagen. <laughs> It even has um, an accompanying website with personal photos of uh, the the mother and the child, uh, and it, you know it's just it's had loads of international attention. But it's one of those, you know, it, it went viral to use a, a postmodern cliche. <laughs> so, but what was the point? The point was just to get attention for Denmark as a place to see. So, the um, Visit Denmark, the, the press the person, the, the, the representative for, for the agency, described the video as the most effective thing they've ever done to market Denmark, um, saying that Denmark's usually a, quite an unknown entity in the global market, but by producing the video, they've shown that the country is a place where women live in a free society, able to make their own choices. But, you know, it's just a joke. <laughs> How, what a bizarre viral campaign! I cannot imagine um, uh, anything like that happening happening here as part of a tourism New Zealand campaign. Um, oh no, we're far too prudish for that sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Daniel, Nelson. you should you should go check it, you should go check it out. There's a load of um, a faux responses as well. You know, fake fathers looking saying that it's their baby. <laughs> <laughs> what what the YouTube humour is really coming into its own. <laughs> give, give us um, give us the uh, the website address again for um, for for the newspaper. For the, uh, the Copenhagen Post? Yep. That's uh, www.cphpost.co.nz. 
dk. Brilliant. That's a letter from Copenhagen. Daniel Nielsen, we'll, um, we'll talk to you next week. Look forward to it. Me too.